Hey, I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 34. On Now You Know. All right, this week, mm -hmm. we just heard that VIPs have been invited to go see the Model 3 a pr a exclusive view of the Model 3. They're going to get to meet Franz von Holshausen, who mm -hmm. is the chief designer of the Model 3 and all of the Tesla cars mm -hmm. um, in Fremont on June 2nd. So wow. emails just went out to all these cool VIPs. It's going to sound, it sounds like they're going to get a VIP factory tour. They're going to have lunch, questions and answers with Franz. I mean, I, I just, it would be so fun to go to something like that, wouldn't it? I mean, you'd get to like be um, backstage and, and go see things that no one else can see. Yeah, and um, it would be like, I mean, Franz, the, the guy is amazing. He's designed all their cars, these uh, groundbreaking hey, cars. You'd be in the same room hey, with Hey, Dad, guy. Um, yeah. just read this email real quick. I know we're just, this is what we're reporting on the story that the VIP. Yeah, no, they sent why this. Is my name on they this? sent this to us. What do you mean? We got invited? Yep. We got invited. We're going to Fremont. 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 Yeah, yeah. Fremont. All thousand. Yeah, all thousand. Oh, baby. Yeah, yeah. Wow, it's because of this is it's because of because you. Because of you guys. We I mean this is so you needed five referrals yes. in a, any given period. And we got five referrals. And it's because you guys used our referral code that we are going to San Francisco. This is gonna be so our, exciting. Our flights are booked. Yep. Our hotels are booked. We are going June 2nd to meet Franz von Holshausen at the Tesla factory for a VIP tour. We are taking you with us. Yes. So we need your help. We want to um, get as much footage as we can, like inside the factory with Franz. Um, and so if any of you have Tesla connections, if you know anyone in marketing, maybe if you, you know, are a Tesla connection. If you know Elon, maybe just sort of maybe drop you us are a line. Elon. Yeah. <laughs> Because uh, we really, I mean, we love Tesla as the company and we want to, um, you know, do a whole suite of videos about, you know, Franz and about the company. Um, yeah, we want to let you know about stuff. And so. I mean, maybe you just live in San Francisco. We would love to meet you if, yes. if that's something that you, you know, want to do. We have, I think, a, a one free day yes. in San Francisco. Um so if you do want to get in contact with us, um, please go to our Facebook page and you can uh, private message us there because that way we can you know, have a back and forth as opposed to the YouTube comments where someone might just come in and start yelling. It, it's, it's, always, it's always exciting in the YouTube comments. Um, also, we really, really would love to meet um, anyone who works at the Fremont factory. Yes. Maybe once your shift gets over or something like that. Yeah, maybe we could interview you in the parking lot or something. It would be so cool to just interview you. You know, we're not going to ask you questions like, you know, so when's the Model 3 coming out? Is it right. going to have, you know, Falcon? I mean, we will ask you those questions. We might ask you that, but... Um, <laughs> you don't have to answer. We, yeah, right. Uh, we just, you know, want to know, like, what you... Yeah, no, what it's like what working What it's there. like working there and, and stuff like that. So if that interests you... Um, again, get on Facebook and uh, just get in contact with us because, I mean, we're pretty friendly. We'll, we'll try and get back to as many people as possible. I have no idea how many people are going to yeah. respond to us. But, um, but yeah, we're going to be there Friday, uh, June 2nd to, for the factory tour. Mm -hmm. um, and so if you are going to be there, you know, working at the factory or something, please let us know. We'd love to meet you. Um, I think we'll be available the day before Thursday. We kind of have a free day in San Francisco. In San Francisco. So we, we're going to be figuring out some plans of how to hook up with, you know, as many people as we can, mm -hmm. um, you know, at a park or at a restaurant or something. So, you know, please message us and let us have some ideas. Also, if you live in San Francisco and you have some ideas about things that we should do and see, I mean, we've gone, you know, uh, we went last summer, but like we don't, we did kind of touristy things. If you know of like some cool, you know, well, they can be touristy things. That's but, true. But, but like, any fun yeah, things, fun any things great restaurants stay. and stuff like that. Yeah, we'll be we staying right in the heart of the city. Love it. So. so, all right, let's get let's get down to some news. That's right. So, I mean, that was kind of a news story. It was news. Uh, We're part of the news. It's part of the news now. The robots have arrived at Fremont. This like transformers and stuff. Well, kind of. Uh, these these red robots here, which everyone's kind of seen before, these are the robots that live in Fremont and make the cars. Mm -hmm. um, these were kind of leaked um, through a Reddit page. I guess there's a a guy who's working for the Kuka robot company, and mm -hmm. he posted these pictures inside the Fremont factory. Wow. So we got a little glimpse here um, of these hundreds of robots that are going in there. Wow. Um, the Model S and X production line right now move at about five centimeters per second. Elon has said that he would like that's to like, see. That's like that fast. Oh, yeah, that's about 
That's pretty fast. Okay, yeah. Uh, he would like to see a 20-fold increase in production speed for the Model 3. I don't know if that means it's actually so going like, to happen. It's like, it's like, yeah, that's it's like that fast. That's one it's meter like, a second. <laughs> um, I, I kind of, I mean, I don't want to doubt Elon, but I, I can't imagine that's going to happen by July. But I think he must mean eventually. I think probably, yeah, definitely eventually. That right. Sounds about right. And these are not the, ro- so these are 467 robots that are, I guess, going to be installed in the next seven weeks, which means that they'll be done in June before, right before. the July release of the car. Yep. Um, so these are not the robots that are coming from Groman Engineering in Germany. These are just kind of simpler robots, I guess you would call them. Interesting. Okay. So, I mean, this is it's just exciting. It shows that everything is seems to be happening on target. Yeah. Um, Really exciting. That's awesome. Whenever you see robots. All right, so let's get into some solar news. Um, Solar news! Panasonic has opened its first battery plant in China. Mm -hmm. It is going to cost $400 million. It'll have 500 employees. The plant will support 200,000 vehicles. Yeah, we don't know that, you know, that could be hybrid vehicles, which use one-tenth the batteries, or Mm -hmm. it could be uh, full batteries. We don't really know the breakdown yet. And these won't just be Teslas uh, that they're providing the batteries. Right, this is going to be all sorts of different electric cars. Right. Um, The newly constructed factory in China is um, a new production facility that's a combination of Panasonic Automotive and Dalian Company. Um, So it's a a partnership. And they're going to be making the flat pack batteries, which again, I don't quite understand. Oh, I see. So these aren't the 2170 cells or the 2100 cells. These are the prismatic type, um, which... So I guess they'd be going in things like the i3 and the Nissan Leaf, right, which use the flat packs. Right. Interesting. The battery should begin uh, production in the first quarter of 2018. Cool. In more solar news, uh, Solar City just announced, or Tesla, uh, Solar City, that they'll have no more door-to-door salesmen. Now, as you, if you have worked with Solar City at all, you know that a lot of their sales come through guys kind of knocking on your door. Right. right? Um, they have a, a sales force of over a thousand people. And Tesla just announced that they're going to stop the door-to-door sales altogether. Wow. They're going to take those 1,000-plus employees, and they'll either reassign them or allow them to apply for other positions in the company. Interesting. Um, and I guess what they're going to do is they're going to soon integrate their energy and solar products into their stores, hoping that all the foot traffic going into their stores will kind of eliminate the need for going door-to-door. I see. So, so they're, a- they're hoping that the Model 3 will sort of pull people in and that you know people who are at least interested in the Model 3 will know to go to the Tesla Tesla store. Yeah, so this is interesting for you know from a company point of view, it's going to save a lot of money on employees, um, right? Because you won't need that big sales force. And this is one of the things Elon talked about that when you combine Solar City and Tesla, that you would get out of it. That's is, true. Is being able to save money. Um, but I don't know. Is this a good thing? I mean, I think that. I mean, I've known some people who did some door to door, and it sounded tough. I mean, mm, not everyone. A lot of doors slammed in your face. Not everyone is ready for right. solar panels on their house, um, and you know, you get a lot of like husbands and wives disagreeing, like, "I want solar. <laughs> it's going to be so ugly." Like, you know, um, all sorts of stuff like that. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, that must that, that's tough, but I don't it's know. It's hard to know. It's, it's, it's hard interesting to, know. to see if I mean, maybe you're much more receptive to it if you come into their store and you see all their cool products. So. Um, Let us know if you start seeing any of these cool Tesla energy and solar products in stores near you, in Tesla stores, um, start popping up because we haven't seen them yet. So Elon Musk just met with the Chinese vice premier. Yeah, so what what do you think they were talking about? So these talks are probably about finding a location to open a gigafactory in China, which is pretty exciting. Um, And so why do they need to do that? So the hope would be that the, uh, Tesla would not need to partner with the Chinese company. Usually, it, um, in order to open anything or sell anything in China, you have to sort of partner with a Chinese company, and that's sort of a way for China to make its money, I guess. Yeah, I mean, so he met with the, the, the vice premier, and I, I'm guessing that they talked about the fact that China would rather have EVs more than they would rather force companies to partner. And I bet you Tesla's been pretty tough on that. I don't think they probably want to partner with another company in mm-hmm. China. So they've probably been saying, hey, we're just not going to be able to come into your market. I do want to point out that Tesla tripled its sales in China to over a billion dollars in car sales in 2016. Wow. That's over 11,000 cars sold there. 
To give you some idea of what that means, that's about 14% of Tesla's revenue in 2016. Wow. In the US, it makes up about 60% of Tesla's revenue. Yeah. So that kind of gives you some idea of how much more growth is available in China because there's plenty more people buying cars there. That's true. Um, so I hope this is a hopeful first step that maybe they're getting a foothold in China. Maybe we'll hear some exciting news. Yeah, that'd be awesome to build a gigafactory in China. Now, it, speaking of exciting news, third quarter results for Tesla are expected tomorrow after the close of uh, stock trading. And we have a chart here that shows Tesla S and X sales since 2012. I thought it was pretty interesting to show how fast the S sales kind of skyrocketed and hit a plateau um, in 2015. Right. And I wonder if it's because of the X. People that were thinking of buying an S switched over to an X or if people just sort of had enough of the S just in general. Maybe, or it could have been that, you know, around that time was the talk about the Model 3, and so maybe some people were waiting for that. Oh, who knows? Um, it's very interesting, though, to see that Model X sales are continuing to be really strong. That's cool. Um, and now that they've lowered the price on the Model S, maybe we're going to see a bump in those sales. All right, so I love listening to Elon Musk give speeches. I know that he's not the best speech giver, but what he has to say usually is mind-boggling. So... Good news is, uh, just a few days ago, Elon spoke at the 2017 TED Talk. Also at the TED Talk was a teaser photo of the Tesla semi-truck. Whoa, look at this thing. Now, it sounds to me from his quote that they have one. What makes you think that? So why don't we get to the quote here? Okay, yeah, let's, let's do that. Elon says, with the Tesla semi, we want to show that an electric truck actually can out-torque any diesel semi. What? If you had a tug of war competition, the Tesla semi will tug the diesel semi uphill. <laughs> and then he went on to say, and it's nimble. It can be driven around like a sports car. Yes. I mean, wow, that's super exciting. If any of you out there can get footage of oh my Elon God. driving around in the <laughs> Tesla semi, oh my gosh. I will tip my hat to you. Yeah, that, that, would, be that would be fantastic. fantastic. But just, yes, you're right. It sounds like they actually have a prototype because, it, I mean, why would he say all these things? Um, right. And the fact that they must have run the numbers and seen that they can out-torque a diesel truck and pull it uphill. I, I mean, mean, that's that, cool. I mean, there's so much here. We're not going to be able to touch on all of it. and hasn't mm -hmm. even come out yet. But the one other thing that really caught me and that we should be reminded about is that Elon has been talking about the fact that he's going to have a completely autonomous cross-country trip. And when he talked about this before, I don't know, it was, it was long enough ago that I mm -hmm. thought, well, that won't happen for a while. Right. It's going to happen in November or December. Okay, so he says November or December of this year, yeah. we should be able to go from a parking lot in California to a parking lot in New York, no controls touched at any point during the entire journey. Wow. Yeah, that's, wow. That's in just a few months. That's just in a few months. I mean, this is going to show the world that autonomous driving is truly here. Wow. Because, I mean, we've seen tests of, of all sorts of different companies mm -hmm. driving around in cities, mm -hmm. driving around. But I mean, there was always a guy behind the wheel and it was only for a few hours. Mm -hmm. So I mean, going across the entire country. Do you know what that means? That what, How many conditions you have to go through to get across the country? Right. We do. We know. It's, right. it's, it's hard. It's tough. Yeah. I mean, you can, on the highway part, yes. I mean, you can use it for 99% of the time. But there's lots of on-ramps and off-ramps and city driving and, and detours and construction. Uh, that If that's true, it's going to be a game changer. That's so exciting. I mean, I, I can't wait to just hop in the Tesla and be like, all right, take me to Michigan. You know, take me to, you know, Florida. Take me to, mm -hmm. you know, Idaho. Let's go. Like, <laughs> it's going to be so exciting. And then just to fall asleep and then to wake up and be in Idaho. It's wow. So uh, this is something else he released during the TED Talk. Um, and this is kind of boring. So you might want to skip it. It's boring video. Um, so we're showing here. What? No, 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 no. This is really cool stuff. I no, mean, but it's boring video. It's it's about the boring company. Yes. So don't get confused. <laughs> this is cool. Um, yeah, two million people so far have watched this video, even though it only came out the other day. And yeah. It's trending on the top 10 in YouTube right now. So check this out. This shows a Model S, this red car here, yeah. driving onto, I guess what I'll call a skateboard. Yes. Which gets lowered into a tunnel below a city. Like with an elevator. Yeah. Like this is something that you'd see in a movie. Right. And then this lowered skateboard then um, zooms, off. zooms off at 124 miles an hour onto a track underground autonomously to its destination mm -hmm. um, where it then gets lifted back to street level. And at the end of the video, we see a multi-level underground network of tunnels going in every direction beneath the city. So this is just a mind-boggling concept. When I was thinking that he was talking about the Boring Company, I was expecting that there would just be tunnels and that you drive into the tunnel 
and then there'd be traffic in the tunnel, and then you'd, you know, finally get to your destination. Like, I, I was in driving through Boston the other day, and I was in tunnels, and there was traffic in the tunnels. Like, I was just sort of expecting it to just be a road underground, mm -hmm. and that now you have two roads. That's great. But this is this is this is like having a whole network, a whole network, and you're going fast. Like it is a super fast, a fast, autonomous. Like it's almost like a train for your car. Yeah, it's it's like Hyperloop underground. I it's, mean, it it makes so much sense, and I hadn't even thought of this as a possibility. Right. Uh, cool quote here from Elon. Uh, yeah. We have a pet snail named Gary. Gary is capable of currently going 14 times faster than a tunnel boring machine. We want to beat Gary. He's not a patient little fellow. That will be victory. Victory will be beating the snail. I mean, that is interesting to think that, you know, these giant tunneling machines um, take so long to go such a short distance. I mean, we're talking like hundreds of feet in a day. Well, check this out. We, because of our awesome viewers like you, have yeah. exclusive video this week of Musk's new tunnel boring machine. Wow. This is an eight meter machine and here it is in front of SpaceX's headquarters. Hello Zach and Jesse. This is Guy in beautiful Hawthorne, California out here at the beautiful SpaceX location. Just wanted to show you guys that Elon's The Boring Company is literally coming together. Thought I'd give you guys another view on how The Boring Company is coming along. It looks like they're just about ready to put this thing in the ground. And I believe behind that white screen there by the generator is where they're going to drop that thing into the hole. And my guess is Elon's going to drill himself a road home. Wouldn't surprise me. Looks like he's got the board just about ready to go. Wow, that's super cool looking. Um, so, I mean, this is... Um, I just want to mention, so an eight meter is not very big. Right, it's one they, on the smaller side. But I'm sure that this I is just... I think he picked it up cheap. It was like... Yeah, you just know, at an auction at somewhere. An on eBay, maybe. Probably. Craigslist. Um, but I I think this is just going to be like for tests. This is going to be sort of their... Or probably one of their machines that they're just going to be playing around with and, and sort of improving and trying to uh, get to go faster and all sorts of stuff like this. Now, I mean, this is current technology that's being used and has been used for years to make tunnels. And right. I, I'm a little sketchy on the details. I understand that it can dig about 300 feet per week. And then Elon says he'd like to get up to a mile per week. Wow. I mean, that's mind blowing. But how does it work? So if you want, uh, I'm going to put a link to the website um, of the actual boring machine that they bought mm -hmm. um, right down below. And it really goes over in detail a lot of how this thing works. Basically, you have a giant cutting head. Mm -hmm. It's removing material away from the face of this tunnel. Mm -hmm. And then you're carting it away. And, the, and you're pushing the whole thing. And you're pushing against these um, sort of concrete plates that form the tunnel. Oh, I see. So and as then, you're digging, so you're, you're pushing. Putting, you're... And then once you get far enough, you build the next layer of the tunnel. Oh. And then you push off of that. Oh, so, I mean, so... we'll show a little bit of the video here. Um, so, I mean, that's how boring machines uh, work, basically. That's so cool. And I definitely encourage you to, to check out their website. They have a really good um, bunch of animations to show how it works and, and lots of projects that they've been working on. Um, and I guess now Tesla is going to be in direct competition with these guys because <laughs> it seems like they're going to be building a better mousetrap kind of deal. Yeah. So, wow. It's pretty exciting. All right. Model 3 pictures. It's yeah, so, always exciting to see new pics. So, people have spotted uh, three new Model 3s. Um, yeah, so let's see. The first one here is the white one. Yes, so we haven't seen a white Model 3 yet. So, um, And it looks a lot, like we said last week, a lot like a Model X. Yeah, the, the back looks a lot like a Model X. Um, there's also a blue one that was spotted. Yep. And there was one in Cincinnati, Ohio. Wait a minute. What? What well, is it, it doing it, did it get so lost? far away? That's, that's I wonder over 2,000 miles I know, away. I wonder if it like autonomously just drove away. Like it was, Maybe they're testing it. Yeah. Maybe it was like Cincinnati. Yeah. And then it just went off. Could have been. That is so cool. Yeah. So you could be spotting them anywhere now, really. All right. So a feature that had previously been missing from Autopilot 2 has finally um, been released. Yeah, and that what is, is AEB? Automatic Emergency Braking. 
Okay. So basically this acts as a last resort solution if the appropriate actions are not taken uh, when Tesla's forward collision alerts the driver. So like if you're not paying attention and you're about to smash into the back of a car, um, the, the car will automatically and emergency, emergency Lee, um, is that a word? No. Uh, <laughs> apply the brakes uh -huh. uh, to hopefully prevent a collision. Or to minimize a collision, right? Or to minimize it at the very least. Um, and this is something that had been missing from Autopilot 2. No, wait, wait, wait. I have that right now in Autopilot 1 here in Sparky, so why would Autopilot 2, which is more advanced, not even have it until now? So the reason for that is that um, Autopilot 1 was uh, straight out of the box from Mobileye. Oh. Um, so all the features that Mobileye had worked on, uh, they got out of the box. Uh, Autopilot 2 is all Tesla. So they are working on Tesla Vision, they're working on their own autonomous package. Gotcha. And so this means that they had to basically catch up after Mobileye sort of backed out on them and was like, oh, we're, we're scared of autonomous cars, even though that's our business. Um, so, yeah, that's why they're behind, basically. And, so, and it was unrolled basically this week. So if you have an Autopilot 2 car in the next few days, if you haven't already, you'll be getting the AEB. Right. Don't test it out. Just just no. check. Just <laughs> Maybe check, like, the, the change log. Right. Don't just don't just start don't driving drive into, at walls. Right. <laughs> um, and this is cool because, I mean, the data has already shown that autopilot cars are safer by almost 40 percent. Right. The because AB, the AEB will prevent you from smashing into right. something. And what's also kind of cool here is that NHTSA, which is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, they made a deal with almost all, all car manufacturers in the U.S. last year that um, by 2022, all car manufacturers agreed, almost all of them, to have AEB installed. Mm -hmm. What's cool here is that Tesla cars already have it. Wow. Way ahead of the 2022 deadline. Perfect. That's great. All right. So last week we saw the video of the Lilium VTOL aircraft, yeah, which man, is so cool. If you haven't seen that, go sweet. check that out. Um, this week, a company called Kitty Hawk, which is founded by, uh, it's a startup, and mm -hmm. it's founded by um, Google's Larry Page, has released a video of their own. Check this out. Interesting. I'm... So, I mean, the last... The VTOL we saw saw was like a drone that goes straight... It's like a, a plane that goes straight up. Right. And then it and then can it... go forward at 186 um, um, miles an hour, 300 right. kilometers an hour. This is... So, we're on water now here, looks like. Yeah. So, I mean... And like, those are, those are like buoys on it. And I'm, it's a drone. I'm super... Is this a toy? It's... Su I'm super not impressed. Their, their video shows like two people like on some lake somewhere like, oh, Margaret, what are you doing? And like, I'll be there in two minutes. How, how did you get, how are you gonna get here in two minutes? L that's literally the video. Um, this is just an, okay, so it's, it's classified as an ultralight okay. um, that's why by the FAA. To, okay. That's why it's allowed to fly mm -hmm. um, in, in sort of uncluttered areas. I think it's more of an ultra tour, okay? Yeah. You are not gonna take this to work. No. A, because this is a drone, so it's super loud. Right. B, you can only fly it over water, so mm -hmm. unless you're, what, like a pirate, you can't take it to work. It looks dangerous. Um, it looks pretty darn dangerous, mm -hmm. I will say that. Um, not that the Lilium aircraft is, is you know, perfectly safe, but, I mean, a lot of the fans look ducted right. um, as opposed to just sort of being motor sticking out. It seems to me like... Um, well, this kind of reminds me of that giant drone that took Casey Neistat for a flight up in Finland. It uh, does. It's just of, a of huge Casey. drone, basically. Yeah. I It just feels like they were rushed, mm -hmm. that they were like, oh, crap, like Lilium came out with their super cool VTOL plane. Right. We have to have something. We have to have a response video. Yep. And so they, it looks like they sort of just threw this together mm -hmm. and just like brought it up to someone's house in the Hamptons or something. And we're just like, well, let's, let's just try it. Um, I, I would much rather have the Lilium, like, in my garage than, I really, than the yeah, Kitty Hawk. Yeah, I don't understand. It just, I mean... It seems like they went in the wrong direction to me. Like, I mean, it's, maybe it's fun for a toy. I don't know, but it... it it's don't. not really an aircraft. I mean, having it be a drone, it just changes the whole aspect of what it is. Maybe it's for Amazon delivery guys. <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, um, who, but, who want to deliver to lakes. I suppose, but I mean, this is this is for Google. Oh, that's so true. maybe Google's going to have their own. I don't know. I don't. Service. I don't think this is. This is you know, just. You I think, think it's serious. vaporware. I think it's just fluff. All right. So every week we get comments from viewers. So many awesome ones, and we try and find ones that you know are 
even super awesomer yeah. to let you know about. And last week we had asked a lot of you about the 60 to 75 kilowatt hour battery upgrade. It had dropped in price from uh, $7,000. Yep. No, was it 9000 yeah, I think somewhere around nine thousand dollars to two thousand. It was a huge drop. Yeah, it was a seven to two. I don't, I don't it was, remember. It was a huge drop. But you were right. Um, what? All I'm the sorry. comments. I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. you were right. Oh. All of the comments that we got basically. Can we put that on big words on the screen? Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> um, basically, we've gotten we've got a bunch of comments from people who had um, sixty kilowatt hour battery pack cars, um, and they basically everyone said that they upgraded no one said that they well, didn't that was the price point that waiting. was the price you were point, so I smart guess. to wait i guess so huh? uh we got this one from uh Stepan cater um who says i immediately upgraded from my 60 to 75 because this only has advantages you can do everything what you did when you had the 60 but if you need to you can charge it um more and it's only two thousand dollars um so it's it's not much for this advantage um and so I said, looks like Zach was right. And then... Uh, I don't hear that that often, <laughs> yeah. so I'm just going to savor it. And then Stepan Cater said, uh, there are more in our German Tesla forum who communicated that they did the same thing. So, yeah. I think it was really smart of Tesla because I think that it, they probably were looking at data showing that, you know, probably a very small percentage of people were upgrading. That's true. And they probably thought, you know what, if we find some price point, mm -hmm. we'll just get a lot more cash. I mean, they must have just got a big cash infusion. Right? I think so, yeah. And made a lot of happy people because basically you just got a very cheap, you got 15 kilowatt hours of battery really cheaply. That's true. Right? I mean, that's that, very is, true. that is $1,000 for every seven kilowatt hours of battery. Right. So that's, that's really good value. Every week we love to show you new superchargers that are getting built and going online. And this week we want to thank our viewers again. We have some cool video, um, some here in, in, the, in the States, some in Europe. So check this out. this weekend. We're from Greenville, South Carolina, headed up to Nashville for the weekend, and we stopped at the Supercharger here in Asheville, right off of Interstate 26. We're at the Asheville Outlet, and I already see a sign that says Starbucks is right inside the food court. There are seven stalls here. It's to the back of the outlets, but there's plenty of restaurants. There's a seafood restaurant, a couple of fast food places, and then of course you have the entire food court to eat in. Hi Zach, hi Jesse, Chris here. I'm at the Supercharger location in Schaffhausen, Switzerland. It's gonna be built an eight stall. As you can see, they already set the foundation here. They already put the concrete sockets down there. And as we go to this side, we can see supercharger boxes yeah drive slowly here at the uh, San Park uh, supercharger in Wales UK uh, we've got an eight stall supercharger uh, 135 kilowatt charger so it should be pretty quick um, and the service is here pretty good too we've got a double H Smith which is sort of bookshop and uh, sandwiches we've got a Burger King and a Starbucks Here we've got, other than my leaf, um, some of the accommodation. So uh, if you uh, were looking for accommodation at uh, the Sam Supercharger, here it is. Thank you so much. These Thank videos so are much. so much fun to watch. It's Thank you. It's so Keep wonderful to, to see us. different parts of the world, different superchargers of the world. Um, and you guys do a great job rating them. So excellent work. Um, some new superchargers that are getting permitted, built, and coming online. Yeah, what do we got? Um, all right, so permitted, we have one in Irwin, New York. We got one in Northeast Maryland, which is being permitted. And Horsham, Australia. Is it, or is it Horsham? Or is it... Horsham! That's, that's Irish. Oh. <laughs> that's Irish sounding. Oh. Uh, I can't... Um, hmm. Horsham, mate. Horsham. Horsham. Brisbane and Horsham, mate. Horsham, that's, that's still horrible. That's yeah. still Scottish, I think. <laughs> uh, construction in uh, Tupelo, Mississippi, and then we have some that are being opened this week in in Monroe, Washington. The one that was under construction just last week in Balacora, Ireland, is now open. That's awesome. And Appledorn, Netherlands. 
and Grantham UK. A lot of these are seem familiar because they were just in construction and permitted weeks ago, and now they're just coming online like that's, crazy. That's super crazy. It is super crazy. Hey, so we want to give a big shout out to our Patreon supporters this week. Um, we love you guys. Yeah. Um, we just got these awesome new t-shirts that Bobby designed. They're fantastic. If you want to go over to Patreon, it, they are one of the perks, so go check that out. Definitely. Um, our supporters this week, we'd love to give a big shout out to Alice Twang, Daniel J. Oseguera, and Marlon Shell. Without you guys, we could not do what we are doing. I mean, we're right. about to go for this awesome trip to, to California, mm -hmm. and we had to get airfare, and we had to get hotels and all that stuff. And I can tell you, without your support, we would, we would have to just stay home. So <laughs> Yeah, it definitely really, really helps um, in order to, to pay for stuff like that and just allows us to do things that we otherwise couldn't. Um, I just want to mention... Uh, that the upcoming deadline for the Tesla Love Day competition. So this now, is what the, is that? this is a, a homemade uh, video competition, homemade commercial for Tesla. Oh, that's right. The little girl that uh, uh, tweeted to, to Elon and said, "I have an idea. Why don't you let your viewers come up with um, commercials?" Yeah. So that deadline is coming up on May eighth. So make sure you get that in. And if you want, you can check out our video what? for some inspiration so yeah. check that out right there that was a lot of fun to shoot that was super fun oh, we hope you like it all right we hope and, Elon likes and it. uh patreon supporters by the way can uh, see some behind the scenes oh of making of the of making commercial? of the commercial nice. so all right definitely check that out if you're a patreon supporter that's fun um and we i also want to mention that if you want to listen to us if you're driving in the car and you can't always take the time to watch you can listen to us wherever you listen to podcasts we are available on now you know podcasts so um feel free to check us out on itunes stitcher all those cool podcast channels yeah all right thank you so much for watching please remember to subscribe and like us now you know now you know